Asset Weekends for this Sunday, December 31st edition. I'm Danielle Turner. Thanks so much for joining me. On today's show, we talk about the American Kennel Club and their national championship airing later today. We also take a look back at a movie from the Slam Dance Film Festival in preparation for this year's festival coverage. But first, let's take a look at our local forecast. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. Welcome back to the show. Are you looking for something to watch this New Year's Eve day? The American Kennel Club is broadcasting its 23rd annual national championships today. And we had a chance to talk with the co-hosts. Let's take a look. Well, there is a lot of neat activities. We talk about sporting activities. We talk about different things, especially out here in ski country, but something that is new that we really enjoy watching here, especially in the mountains, is the AKC. Now the AKC American Kennel Club has been around for a long, long time. And I've got Gina DiNardo and Carolyn Mano that are here with me right now to talk about what's happening in 2023 with this exciting event. We've got the national championship. Hey, Kevin, how are you? I'm great, thank you. <laughs> who, well, are those really two, excited. who are those two friends with you? So this is Brooke. She is a 15-month-old or 13-month-old Whippet. And this is Mavis, and she's almost 10 years old. Nice. Both Whippets, so, yeah. Perfect. So I'm sorry I cut you off, Carolyn. No, I was going to say, we've got, yeah, we've got a veteran and a rookie here. Um, and we're so excited about the national championship. It's on ABC on New Year's Eve at 2 o'clock Eastern time, so around 11 a.m. where you live. And there's so many different breeds on display. I know, Kevin, you were mentioning uh, all kinds of different sporting breeds. A lot of those breeds that you see out in Colorado, whether it's the Retrievers or, you know, the Swiss Mountain breeds, if you're up kind of in that mountain range, um, a working dogs that are so popular. There's there's a lot to choose from at the American Kennel Club. There's 200 recognized breeds. So wow. you might see some that you're familiar with out there your way. And then there are so many that are brand new to so many people too. So you talk about the AKC and the different breeds. What are the qualifications for a dog to be included in the national championship? So the national championship is the culmination of a year's long competition, but any dog that is registered with AKC can enter the national championship, but then you have to beat the big guns to get to the big stage <laughs> because all the top dogs in the country and from around the world, we have dogs from 35 different countries and all 50 states competing. Uh, but anyone with a purebred dog can compete in confirmation events and anyone with a dog can compete in the 20 other AKC events that we have. So. Really, if you have a dog, there's something for you to do. Well, that is amazing. I know we have a, an activity out here called the GoPro Games, and that's in June. <laughs> and they have Doc Dog Championships. They have obstacle courses, a lot of neat things to run. Where in the country or where, I guess, around the world are your competitions held? So we have competitions over 5,000 events annually uh, all over the country. So there's definitely one or two in your community. Uh, there's a calendar of events on akc.org, our website. And so you can look up and find the dog show that's in your community. It's a great family event. It's a great way to learn about different breeds. If you're looking to add a breed to your lifestyle, there are a bunch of rare breeds that you only see at a dog show that might make a great family pet. So uh, it's a real fun event. The national championship on TV is a great way to also learn about the dogs and all their his all the history that's behind them, their function, their purpose. 
So it's educa edutainment is like I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that term. And you kind of hit it on that. That's very interesting. People should go to one of these competitions. If you're looking to get a dog for your family, what a better place to go than to learn about the dispositions and like you said, the lifestyle that the dog leads to make sure it matches what your family lifestyle is. Yep, and then there are the breeders that are there are really the breed experts. So it's a great place to talk to people who have lived and bred these breeds for you know decades and can give you really like the inside scoop of what it's like to live with a certain breed. And you know, along the way, you, you make friends, you make mentors, and it's a great family sport. Nice, what a great resource. Now let's talk rules. So in the competition itself, is the competition made up of multiple mini competitions to lead up to the finals or how is that done and what type of rules are put into place? Yeah, Kevin, it's a great question. It's a question that I get asked a lot and it's a very rigorous judging process that begins with breed judging. So when you go down to Orlando, Florida, for example, for the national championship, we have thousands of dogs down there and so many dogs of the same breed. So you're judged within your breed itself. And then when you make it out of that group, you go to what's called the group phase of the judging, which is groups like the toy group, the sporting group, the non-sporting group, the hound group, the working group. And those are breeds that are all classified based on the form, the heritage, the traits that they all share. When you get to that point, you are at the big stage and you've made it uh, through a quite a big process already. And then the judging for the national championship to make it out of that group, we call these dogs judged um, according to what's called the breed standard. So that is kind of the blueprint for what an ideal breed should be. So when you see those final seven on the big stage on ABC, it's not necessarily a French bulldog going up against a Sholowitz Quintley and which one is better out of the head-to-head -head competition. It's which one of these breeds is most closely resembling the perfect ideal version of their particular breed. And so that's the most interesting part about it is that if you see the dog standing at the end of the day at the national championship, you know that this dog has been bred so closely to what the perfect version of this breed would be. It's really exciting to, to get to that point and see just how beautiful they all are. It's very exciting. And I know towards the end there, the pageantry that takes place and just even from the toy group, when they walk across the stage, it's very majestic. It's just uh, oh, yeah. it, the, the training and the time that goes into this. I can't imagine the hours. Well, it's lifelong dedication for a lot of these breeders and owners. They dedicated to preserving their favorite breed and then breeding the best quality dogs that they can, healthy, happy dogs. Yeah. And so, uh, again, the best dogs are on, on parade at the national championship, and it's a wonderful place to learn about all the different breeds. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your time this morning. And for people to tune in, when is the competition again, please? Yes, so it'll be 11 a.m. your time, 2 p.m. Eastern on ABC on New Year's Eve. We can't wait. Well, best of luck to you both. Enjoy this competition. 2023 is sure to be a great show. So Welcome back to the show. Here at Park City Television, one of our favorite times of year is certainly film festival time. Let's take a look back at a slam dance movie that premiered in 2023, Who's Annie? Are you looking to laugh? Well, there is a pilot episode of Who's Annie coming out at Slam Dance for the 2023 screening, and it is going to have you giggling. And I'm so lucky because I'm joined by the star, Annie Pasapia, and I'm joined by Sophia Pierre, who's directed, and they've really collaborated on bringing this entire project together to make it such a wonderful production. So thank you guys so much thank for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us, yeah. So not everyone has seen the pilot. Everyone has maybe seen the trailer at this point. And so for people who don't know the story, can you guys give us a little background on it? Sure. Well, it's premiering on the 22nd. We're very excited uh, to finally share it with an audience. It's a 30 minute scripted comedy series that is both about and starring Annie. And uh, the idea for the whole concept for the show happened when Annie and I met at a Burger King in Queens. <laughs> Which I think is quite funny that you guys met in a parking lot at a Burger King in Queens. And now, Annie, you have done some crazy things in this career that you have recently just started in acting. 
you know, something I have had so much fun. I only started acting, jumping in about six years ago. And it has been, when they say a roller coaster ride, hang on for your life. This is, and it's, and it's all fun. I wouldn't jump off, not for the world. Hang on for your life. I'll tell you, it's fabulous. Now, you guys all have... <laughs> Sorry. You guys have both worked on some big projects. And so for people who may have not known or seen any of your work, can you guys both give us some examples? Well, Annie's been in every big show that's come out in the past six years, often playing like a, <laughs> often playing a smaller part. She'll be like an inmate, a janitor, um, a nun. Um, she's had all sorts of crazy roles and you know, up and coming for her are 10 new projects where she has like bigger roles. And for me, it's been mainly music videos and short films. Uh, the short films have been in mainly like art spaces, some film festivals, and I've done music videos for bigger bands like Paramore or The National and Interpol, things like that. I just have to ask, what has been the career highlight for both of you so far? Nothing's bigger than this. <laughs> I, have, for me, I have to tell you, I, th this is so, this is huge. I mean, when someone says, hey, let's make a TV show ab about you, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, like, does it get any bigger than that? But I've done some, some, some work on some really cool projects, you know what I mean? Some network TV, some cable TV. I've worked on Manifest, New Amsterdam, uh, Nora from Queens, Aquafina, other shows too, but like in that's in the most recent past, but they're exciting. It's, it's, it's really exciting. It really is. And what a cool moment to have you be the muse and the inspiration behind this entire TV show. So, Sophia, as you're writing this plot, you guys both get to take these very vulnerable parts of your life and kind of expose them, not only in a humor kind of context, but in a context where people might be able to relate to them and it might help them. Yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> I feel like it's the, the whole show is about Annie, right? But it's also about her path in the acting world. And then it's also about women's on-camera roles. So initially, I was going to cast somebody to play me and have that person be me in the series to make this show about a show thing happen. But as I was working with the actor Sophia Dobrishin and directing her to direct Annie, that became the funniest part of it. Awesome. And, uh, <laughs> the co-writer, um, Annie, another Annie, behind the scenes Annie, Annie Sickerman, was like, we need to pivot so that it's a show within a show within a show. Like, let's just have this whole thing. And it escalated into that, which was, um, it's very layered. It's like an onion. Now, I just, go sorry. ahead. No, go ahead. I just wanted to say one thing uh, on that. You know, Sophia came to me. We had this, we started doing this whole thing. And it made me, the, the fact that Sophia and then the whole team you know, Annie, other Sophia, you know, um, Manol, everybody, the whole team was working so hard, made me want to work even harder, hustle even harder to get better roles, to get more, to, you know, so that they would ha be proud of me, you know what I mean? So that they'd say, okay, we have more stuff to write about. Like, I couldn't, I didn't just sit back and just say, okay, let them, let them just write a show about me. It was just very, uh, encouraging to me on top on top of everything it was like so encouraging that there it is well annie they show a lot of your life and just even in that first episode they go into some of the things that have happened to you in your past and they tell your story very openly and so what was it like to kind of go through this and share maybe those hard moments that you've experienced in your life well <laughs> It's it started it started with the, with the trust the trust that I have in Sophia and the comfort level that I had in discussing all this and I feel that I I was wanted to be very open and to show the world and whoever wants to to see or know that 
it doesn't matter what you go through. You know, you, you can always come out the other side. You have to work at it and so on and so forth. But everything is not the end of the world. You know, you can you can make it through hard times, bad times, whatever it is. You can you can do it. You can do it. I mean, and I'm just I'm living proof of that. And that's part of my message. Which I think is really important, and I think it's really important that people hear this, and especially maybe those younger people dreaming or those younger people going through their hardship, and not even just the younger people, but people in general, hearing that you had this dream, you started it, and you've been successful in it. It's possible. It's possible. You know, life, life, life has, life, you fall down. I fall down. I make mistakes all the time. My life is a big mistake, and I've cried many, many tears. But I can only cry so much till you say to yourself, am I going to stay down on the floor and just cry forever and that's the end of it? Or am I going to get up and give myself another chance? People will help you, but you got to give yourself, you, it, it, it comes from within. And that's why when I, you know, was talking to Sophia and we went through just so much together, it's been a few years in the making. And uh, she probably knows more about me than basically anybody. It's and it's and it's 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 fabulous. It really is. So, would you guys say that your friendship is as strong off camera as it becomes on camera as well? Yes, definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. I love to hear that. Now, Sophia, you have worked a lot on music videos, and so that means that you have a little bit more creative freedom just because you get to kind of direct and see these visions for these music videos, but this is totally your vision coming to life. So how has it felt to make that switch from those music videos to something like Who's Annie? <laughs> I mean, you can have some creative freedom with music videos more so than other projects, of course, but at the same time, at the end of the day, that product is for that band, right? Right. This is like completely coming from me. Like this is every part of me. This is so many things that I've always wanted to say, so many things that I've wanted to talk about. And I mean, it, I couldn't be happier to finally have something out there that really represents me as a filmmaker. Um, you know, I guess I've made other things before, but never at this high caliber, you know, like I really made sure that everything looked the way I wanted it to. Like we weren't making compromises, even though our budget was very small. We made it happen, and I had a lot of people believe in me and believe in Annie who made this very possible and made it exactly what I wanted it to be. Which is so incredible, and it's so incredible to hear both of you guys talk about it and then see it come to life. And that people are going to be in love with the series because I cannot wait <laughs> for the next episode already <laughs> since I got to see the first one, and I was like left ready for the next one. So what was your guys' favorite part about filming it? <laughs> Ooh, that's a tough one. I can't even answer that question I, without laughing. We had, so, we, Sophia, take this one. There's so, so much fun. We had, a, it was a ball. We had so much fun. Oh, man. I mean, we filmed a lot in my parents' house, which was pretty surreal. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe one of my favorite days is the um, the scenes, the last, the end part of it where Annie and I are both in my parents' bedroom in the house that I grew up in. Um, and we made quite a mess. You'll have to see the episode to totally <laughs> understand, but it was one of the messiest things. Um, and my parents were just away for the weekend. I sent them away and I still don't know if they know exactly what their house looked like during that. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of laughter that day. I, I, I just, I get to tell you, one of my favorite scenes was uh, with Lily. Oh, of course. Lily, oh, yeah. my God. I can't, I don't even want to, you know, mention what it was, but we would just completely, it was really non-scripted. We were just going back and forth <laughs> with it, and I had so much fun because I'm just it's like a completely out of body experience almost just free for all and it was hysterical we could barely speak on camera because we were all literally holding each other up laughing so hard it was that funny it really really was <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah Annie and um, comedian Lily Murata are in a scene together in this pilot that is, uh, we, we had an outline for what they should do, but we just kind of gave them bullet points and they just ran with it. And it was, <laughs> yep, we were all dying. Oh, yeah. I love those moments. Now, if people are interested in seeing the wonderful pilot at Slam Dance, where can they go? When can they see it? And how can they get tickets? Oh, well, uh, through the Slam Dance website, you can get a ticket for the premiere, which is on the 22nd at, at 945. And then there's another screening on January 26th, which is going to be um, at 1130 a.m. So you have two chances to see this. <laughs> well, I feel like seeing it in the morning is starting your day off so right because you're just going to start your day off by giggling. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you both very much for taking the time to chat with me. Now I have one very simple final question. If there's someone out there who aspires to do what either of you guys are doing, what piece of advice would you give them? Don't give up. <laughs> uh, we had a lot of, uh, I mean, in making this show, there were a lot of challenges and it took us a really long time, uh, whether it was COVID or financial constraints, um, what, what have you, there were a lot of things that made me think like, can I do this? Can I make this happen? And um, I took a lot of risks and I feel better that I did than if I didn't, you know, even if the result wasn't as good. I feel like you really need to take risks and believe in yourself. Annie, I'm sure has, she has very I, inspiring advice about. Uh, I have one thing to say. <laughs> I, the, on, on the tagline, and I think that I had said this in, in the show somewhere, grab your dreams by the throat. Just <laughs> grab it. That's the truth. That's what I tell people. You got one life. Live it. You got one life, go for it, you know? I think these are both great pieces of advice. I wanna thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat with me. I feel thank very you. fortunate to have spent some time with you, giggle a little bit just from the commentary and the, the things that have been said here, but I highly recommend that everyone sees this pilot because I was laughing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much. <laughs> Make sure that if you're in the area, you go check out Slam Dance because it is going to be one of those things you're not going to want to miss. Who's Annie is going to premiere and it is going to be a ton of fun, so make sure you check it out. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, we've got more of the show. This weather report is brought to you by Sun and Ski Sports, your new mountain sports headquarters. for joining us for today's edition of Wasatch Weekends. I'm Danielle Turner. We'll see you tomorrow.